G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Bit of a continuation of the modem internet stuff from uh, yesterday's videos. Thought I'd show you a bit of a time saving measure that you can do. Um, and when I say time saving, I mean saving time being on hold to your ISP ready to throw rocks down their throat through the phone because your internet's gone a little bit up the fuck. A line isolation test is where you remove your handset from the phone and plug your modem straight into the phone line. Now, as a uh, just as a side note, this is only for DSL only. Okay, not fiber, not uh, cable. This is purely just DSL. Okay, and it's ADSL one through to ADSL two plus uh, um, capable as well. In one of the videos yesterday, I explained that I run my internet in isolation mode. Now, unfortunately, where I live, I cannot get a uh, fiber channel, I cannot get ADSL2+, plus, uh, and I can't get naked ADSL. So, unfortunately, I have to pay one of Australia's main telco providers, Line Rental, to get the internet. A line isolation test is handy to find out whether or not the problem is at your end, or your ISP's end. So I'm going to show you how to perf perform a line isolation test and this can save you time from being on hold, as I said, ready to throw rocks down the throat of your ISP through the phone. Let's get into it. Now as I said, I don't have a home phone, so for the purpose of this demonstration, just assume I've got a phone plugged into here, okay? This is pretty much standard. You get your line filter splitter from your ISP, which goes in line with your phone plug. Now, the age of my house, I still have this sort of phone connection here, okay? Now, most Australians will recognize this internationally. It may be a bit different. This is what we use here in Australia. In newer properties, you have what looks like an RJ45 plug straight into your wall, okay? But for the purpose of this test, that's what I've got. And as I said, ordinarily, you would have a phone out of here. Now, the idea with this is, is it splits your internet from your phone and filters out any noise that could be on your phone line. Now, let's just assume that your internet's gone a little bit flaky. Now, this also, it's not just re related to servers and... and um, uh, that type of stuff. This is anyone. You know, your gamers, your... You know, you, you might be operating a small web server from your home or you might be an enterprise business running a big, large network in a corporate environment. You know, you've got RDC connections, web services, everything. Your internet's gone a little bit flaky. Now, to save you, you time, and let's face it, with some ISPs, their customer service is pretty crap and their tech support is limited at best, I'm going to save you a bit of time. Firstly, locate this on your phone line, okay? What you do, that's my modem, you remove the splitter and the phone. You get the phone line coming out of your modem and you plug it straight into the phone port. Now what this does, okay, is isolate the internet signal from the phone signal. Then what you would do ordinarily is go surf the web and check the performance of your internet. Now, if the performance is improved back to where it should be or better, it could be this giving you grief. Now, this is from Telstra, one of Australia's largest telco providers. And you can see there it's an inline filter splitter. These have a habit of becoming flaky. I've gone through piles and piles of these over the years, both personally and replacing them for customers. Now, the ISP ones aren't always uh, exceptionally good. Okay, so you have some options. We'll get into the options later. So, you find that your internet's much better now. So, what you do with this is, you would then, you've got a couple of options. One, go and buy a better version of this, from an electronics or telco, telco retail store and replace it. 
Now, if you find that your internet's gone back correctly, you chuck the one that's dead, okay? I've got heaps of these things lying around. Okay, so then you find, we'll, we'll go to the other scenario now. So you've removed this, you've got your internet plugged into the wall, and it's no better, okay? What you would do then is remove your internet and get a handset, non-cordless, okay? A corded handset and plug it straight into the wall plug without this, okay? So you remove, remove your DSL line and plug the phone straight in. Now, if the phone, and it needs to be a corded phone because cordless is, is, can be affected by inter, um, interference, and can give you a false reading. So you've plugged your phone in and you find that your handset's noisy. Now if your handset's noisy, that is a telco issue and there's options there as well. Option number one would be to contact the, the ISP provider and get them to do an external line, line sync test and all ISPs are able to do that. Option number two, if it's critical, and you can afford it, is to get an external line filter, which goes in before your wall plug. Okay, goes in before your wall plug. And I'll show you that. So here is my wall plug. And there is, if you can see it, there's my phone line running all the way over the pole. Now the pre-wall filter would go in somewhere here, okay? And what it does, it splits the signal before it gets to the wall plug. That is a rare, fairly expensive option. If you can afford it, do it. However, if that doesn't work, it could be your wall plug. Now, if it is your wall plug, you then go and do the same isolation test on a different wall plug. If you get the same results, it's your ISP. If you get improved results, put your splitter back in and see what happens. Now, if your internet goes back the way it was prior to it going flaky, you'll probably find it's your wall plug. The idea behind these little things, and as I said, they are, they can be temperamental, is if you've got a noisy phone line, this helps smooth out the DSL signal, right? Because noise, signal to noise ratio and, and Noise margins are critical when dealing with DSL. And as I said, this is only for DSL. This has nothing to do with cable, cable fibre, or Australia's useless NBN. So these, this one here is stuffed. I know that. This is, this is buggered. Um, so I just used it for the purpose of the demonstration. Now... Once you've performed all these tests and you're still not getting anywhere, then you get onto your ISP. Um, and if necessary, start throwing rocks down their throat. Now, the one thing you've got to be careful with ISPs are they don't always tell you the truth. Okay, you need to be wary of that. Um, I found over my career, even when I've told them what I am, in the field, they still treat me like a dummy. The other thing I've found is that a lot of ISPs tend to deal mainly with your basics, like the D-Link modem and your net gears. If you have a more advanced modem, say an enterprise modem from Cisco or Belkin or any of that, the ISPs here in Australia struggle with them. I don't know about overseas, but they struggle with them here in Australia. So that's how to perform a line isolation test prior to jumping on the uh, jumping on the dog and bone and you know giving your ISP grief. I hope that sort of helps out a few people. You don't need to be worried about performing a line isolation test either, uh, everyone, because it's a pretty simple process. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helped you out before. And as I said. Doing it before you ring your telco and telling your telco you've done it, or your ISP, I'm sorry, can save you time.
Because if you can do it before you ring your ISP, you're likely to be able to get your ISP to move a bit quicker on fault finding. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.